Let's make a basic spacecraft using the Shores of Hazaron spacecraft designer. Start with a few settings. The uh, edge line should be visible. Solid face display should be off. Set your grid spacing to one meter. It should be on and snapping to the grid should be on and turn on vertex snapping. Let's back up here a little bit. This yellow thing in the middle is the origin of the coordinate system of the design space. It's also the pivot point of the spacecraft we're going to make. It, it has to be inside the hull somewhere. Okay, I'm going to back up here a little bit. I'm going to start by making a hull. The hull is the exterior appearance of the spacecraft. It can be made out of one or many parts. Each part can be incredibly detailed. We're going to keep it simple. We're going to draw a basic extrusion starting out here at the minus 10 meter mark. I'm going to go up 30 meters along Y over here to 10 meters, bevel the corners by 3 meters. Oh, that looks, that looks good. I'm, the prompter line for all these draw commands gives you options. In this case, D is done. It's going to give me some options to finish this thing at 4 meters tall. There's my hull extrusion. Now, I'd like to move my grid. Get used to moving your grid. This thing is like using a ruler. It doesn't stay in one place. You're going to move it all over the place and rotate it all the time. Okay, let's make a, an, uh, what would we call it, an engine thruster cone. Okay, I'm going to just work it out here. Let's turn our grid space, actually just turn off, yeah, turn the grid spacing down to tenths of a meter just to get a little more resolution. We're going to make a hull spindle and oh, start up around it. That's, it. That's what, one meter, two meters, three meters. It's a pretty big thing. Let's, uh, a little outline of what we would like the outline of our thruster cone to look like. You could get really crazy here. I'm done. I push D and uh, there it is. What does this look like in solid? It looks like that. Okay. By the way, to stop the drawing command I pushed escape. All the drawing commands stop when you push escape. I do it so automatically I don't think about it. I'm moving the grid to the bottom of my thruster cone because I want that to be the origin of the thruster cone. I'm going to... Uh, what are we doing here? I want to... Now that that's the origin, I'm going to cut this thing to the clipboard with that origin. And now, I'm going to put my grid on there and I'm going to move it up uh, this thing was four meters tall I'm going to move it up two meters now it wants to know where I can type in zero comma zero comma two and it moved up there it is really kind of wanted it centered but let's go to one meter spacing that'll make it easy to eyeball Okay, and then let's do a edit paste at. Okay, there's one of my thruster cones. I'm going to put it right, looks like about one, two, three meters over. That's shown in the upper right corner as a co three comma zero coordinate. Okay, and then this one, we're going to go similarly three back from that side. And escape to kill it. There's, we're going to call that the hull of our ship. Let's see what it looks like in the solid. Turn off the wires because we won't see those in the game. And uh, I don't really like my thruster cones. I'd like to move them along positive Y a little bit. I'm going to select both of them and type a vector here to move them 0, 0,1, which means a point one along positive y. When I hit enter, they're going to move. I'm going to hit enter again because I want them to move a little more. Oh, how about a little more? Oh, I like that better. Okay, so we're going to go with that. 
and I'm just going to deselect those by clicking and uh, we're going to go back to uh, wireframe that takes care of the our hull exterior that's all we're going to do for this ship model I could add objects all day long every one of them adds volume and you'll see where that matters later at this point I want to draw the inside I'm going to move the grid down to the level of the nose of the ship and I snapped it there because then I get a, the green axis is down the middle and that gives me a visual reference here okay now we're going to draw the inside that's the outside let's just draw one big room and we're going to use the part menu and we're going to draw a room we're also going to make an extrusion and we're going to start very close to the front and we're going to come down here 7 by 21 that happens to be the same slope as that other line okay uh, and it just looks parallel okay and then we're going to come down this way really close to the back wall I don't want to I don't really want to go all the way we're going to stop a meter short and then we're going to go over here it looks like the green line is 7 so let's go 14 over and we want to go up so we're lined up with that guy so it looks like about there okay and we're done now our hull is four meters tall so let's make the room three meters tall that way we have some thickness between the outside and the inside okay and I pushed escape to kill that command and let's go take a look at this from the side we're gonna find that because our grid was at the bottom of the hull our room is lined up with the bottom of the hull well that's too close we don't want a paper thin floor let's pick that room and I'm gonna move it using my uh, box up here and I'm gonna just illustrate now that zeros are unnecessary we're just gonna move this comma comma point five that's gonna move it up half a meter there we go All right. now we have the inside and this is a room get in the habit of naming rooms it matters uh, it matters not just for esoterics but for uh, associating things together for the lighting calculations of the renderer all right so in order to get inside and outside of this spaceship we need a door we're gonna put one on the back wall right between our thruster cones now if we're gonna draw a door on the wall we need to align our grid to the wall that'd make it easy this command allows us to position the grid using three points and we're going to snap them to this corner of the room to this far corner of the room let's get in there and make sure that we're getting the room and not the engine there and then this other point determines the plane it doesn't have to be exactly above the other one it just has to be in the plane let's put it right there now our grid is aligned with that back wall I'm going to reduce the grid's uh, spacing to 0.1 meters and I'm going to restore my how are we going to find the center easily it looks like it's this line so let's draw a door now to make a door here we'd really like to cut a hole in the inside wall cut a hole in the outside wall and then line the two uh, uh, the the gap that's left with uh, polygons so that it would be appear to be solid there's a tool for doing just that it's called a jig it acts like a drill that can drill any shape let's go up here and draw a door jig okay I've aligned my grid with the wall we're gonna we're gonna put this jig right through here I'm gonna start right here you'll see why I want to give it a little bit of finaz here we're gonna go up uh, one point uh, eight meters I guess that's close enough and then uh, go over and we're gonna bevel the corners off here a little bit and so now we're at another point eight over oh let's go 1.6 Now 
I think our whole door is two meters wide. Yep, it is. And we're going to line that one up on the other side. A two meter wide door is pretty big, but this is our back door. And it's two meters tall. That's six feet. Uh, okay, so we're going to call this done. And this is like a drill bit. The length doesn't matter so much, except sometimes you want to restrict it to keep it from running into things that you don't want to cut. Three meters long is going to be plenty. We'll make our three meter long jig. Escape to kill that command. Here's our jig. Now, I was very careful not to put the jig exactly on the floor. The the jigs don't like to be coplanar with things, so if you can lift them above the floor or keep them away from the walls, uh, you'll get a better cut. Now, I also don't want this to start right flush with the wall, so I'm going to back it into the wall a little bit. I've selected it. I'm going to type comma, comma, minus one just to push it a meter down into the wall. There we go. Now our drill bit sticks through the wall, and we're going to select our inside, select our hull, and select our jig. On the part menu, we're going to hit jig cut. Now that just cut that up. There's some superfluous lines, but don't worry about that. They may make no difference at all in the final model. We're done with this door jig for now, so I could delete it, or in my case, I usually make them invisible, because that way I can use that jig again somewhere else. It doesn't ever need to be in this spot again, so I can drag it around and move it somewhere else and make identical doors some in other parts of the ship. This is the only door we're going to make in this design. Okay, <clears throat> let's take a look at the result. What it created was this automatic door. It has a combo box that shows that it's open. Let's look at the solid state of this. There's our open door. And if I close it, it closes. It, it fills in that space. Now, without us doing any more work to the geometry of that door, or texturing it, it's going to be completely invisible when it's not the selected object. And that's how it would look in the in the game. That, that is a secret door, if you don't otherwise work to make it unsecret. But we're going to do that. We don't want secret doors. Okay, so we're going to go to wireframe mode. This is how I usually do this, just to, if I'm trying to be quick about it. I'm going to use this command, and you'll notice one of the key options is reset. And I'm just going to reset the plane. That puts it back at the origin, uh, or rotated uh, with zero rotation. Now I'm going to move it to here, and I'm going to move it again so that it's about halfway down through the door. Now the reason for this is because when I I'm going to stretch this door so that it's not quite perfectly lined up with the edges, and uh, when I do that, I it's going to stretch to and from the origin of the uh, of the design of the uh, grid. And so I put the origin there so that it will squeeze toward the uh, origin. And we'll do that right now. Okay. Now I'm going to push Shift S to scale the door. And uh, now I'm going to. Now I can see it could scale it. Well, I don't want it to scale it in that direction. I'm going to push Y to restrict it along the to lock it on the Y axis. You'll see that that's an option on the uh, prompter bar. Y. Now I move the mouse and we get a little bit of a different stretch. And what I'm after is a door that sits in just a little like that. I'm going to hit escape. I guess I don't know why. And uh, deselect the door and turn wireframe mode on it. And now you can see the outline of the door. So let's move down here inside. There's our door inside. Okay. Inside, you can't see outside very well. Let's use the other kind. Of, there's another kind of jig. There's multiple jigs, but there's another kind of jig called a window jig. I'm going to change my grid spacing to one meter, and I'm going to switch to wireframe mode. I'm going to move my grid to be even with the something up here. How about the nose of the spacecraft? This is just for reference. We're going to move our jig anyway. I'm going to go to the part menu and make a window jig. Now jigs can cut in 
in either direction or in any direction. They don't always produce perfect results though. They're just a convenience. There's nothing that a jig does that you can't do just by drawing the polygons or cutting them up yourself, but it sure saves a, a lot of work. I'm going to cut this window through. You're going to see how this is going to work. So that it, it kind of wraps the window around the front. See right in here that that is going to create a little bit of a turn inside. Okay. I'm done. I'm going to make, I know my inside room is two meters tall, so I'm going to make my window, I mean the inside room is three meters tall. I'm making my window jig two meters tall. Okay, and again, this thing's lined up with the ground at this point. It's not uh, where I want it. So I'm going to select it here, and I'm going to type comma, comma, how about point 0.1 and just hit enter a few times until it gets up to where I want it. How many times was that? Oh, it looks like I could go up a couple more. Yeah, somewhere in there. That looks good. Now we're going to cut this window. The window jig uh, is similar to the door jig except that it creates window parts instead of door parts. Okay, we're going to cut this part, jig cut, and once again the jig isn't really needed after we're done with it. I'm just going to turn it off so I can't see it. Let's look at this thing in solid mode. Look at there. The window has variable transparency. You can set it to whatever transparency you want. The panes are only visible from one side. It actually made an object that has panes that face both directions. Uh, if you wanted to get rid of it for, from the inside for some reason, you could do that. Um, one reason you would do that would be to make it absolutely, completely transparent from the inside instead of having that little bit of transparent blend. Okay, our window is done. That is, uh, oops, sorry for the jumping around there. Let's go back to wireframe. Oops. That's, that's a, as much of the geometry as we're going to do on this thing. But let's keep going. We have more to do. Let's make this door work. Well, what have we got so far? What we have built is some geometry that appears to be a spaceship. As far as the game is concerned, this is one solid chunk of, of spaceship. There are no empty spaces inside here at all. We have to tell it where the empty spaces are. And we're going to do that using a thing called a room void. Now, to use this, I'm going to draw it. I'm going to be drawing inside my room. I want to draw on the floor, so I'm going to put my grid on the floor of the room. There we go. And I'm also going to change my grid spacing to uh, 0.1 meters. Let's go up here under the part menu, and we'll find uh, paths, because it's related to pathing. The room voids allow uh, or allow the movement inside these areas. Okay, I'm going to start. I like to make my voids a little ways from the wall if, whenever possible because it makes it harder for somebody to get so close to the wall that their eyes see through it. Room voids should be extremely simple, as simple as possible. The wall, for instance, could be incredibly ornate and have all sorts of detail to it, and uh, that's way too much for the room void. Uh, which one of these is the room? Oh, there it is. It's that one. Uh, it's too much detail to have all that little polygons on the room void, because the room void is used at runtime to determine things like if something is in the room, and it's best if for efficiency if that room void contains as few polygons as possible. It also has some other rules. The, the main other rule to it, two rules, are that it has to be airtight. There can't be any openings in the room void. Okay, this one's done. 
I push D, and uh, I'm going to let it go ahead and be 3 meters tall. That's the same as the room height. The room void has some parameters that know who's allowed to be there. For our little ship, let everybody be in the room. Make the room be able to access the hold so that while you're in there and you use the uh, hold access button, you can get to things in the hold. And we're going to give it artificial gravity with the uh, grid Z being up. The grid Z is on our floor. Actually, real Z is up. That works. Okay, there's our room void. And now that room is hollow, so someone could walk in there. This arrow indicates the gravity direction for that room void. Alright. We have to draw two more room voids. One of them is uh, outside the hull, outside this door. I'm going to move my... Uh, actually, let's start with the, the, uh, the doorway one first. There needs to be a room void that shows the uh, uh, the space that's accessible when you walk through the door. We're going to go to the paths, and we're going to make another room void, and we're going to make it about as wide as the door. These things, uh, it's actually better if room voids overlap. Don't try to get exact and bump them up against each other, because then you get like rounding errors where once in a while you'll hit that wall that where it decides it's not paper thin for some reason. Okay, we're going to call that done, three meters tall. And there's uh, the, the void in the doorway. It doesn't need hold access, I guess. Okay, that's the doorway. Oh, it's too tall. I'm just going to ignore it for this example, because I don't want to get crazy about modifying the height of this. Actually, let's do it. I'm going to enter object mode. That allows me to... is that what it's called? Face mode. In face mode, I can uh, window select the top of that, and I can say comma comma minus point one, oops, point one, and bring it down. I hope you observed how that worked. Let's do that some more, bring it down a little more there. And uh, we're done with face mode. Okay. Now, the hull itself has a margin around it that, that uh, keeps things from getting too close so to where they can see through the hull. In order to ensure that we have a space outside here for, to get close enough to walk through this door, we're going to make a void there that's called a hull void. Hull voids don't have gravity because they have whatever natural gravity the outdoors has. We're going to draw this at a lower level, right there. Now you'll notice I was able to move the grid without killing the uh, void command. That's very typical of the draw commands. It's very, it's essential for some of them. Okay, I'm going to make this void just kind of stick out here a ways. I just need to be able to make sure that a person can walk in close to this without bumping into the hull. The hull void nullifies the hull obstruction area, and wherever it goes outside that hull obstruction area, it's simply ignored. So the extra hull void simply is ignored. Okay, and we're going to make this one four meters tall. Okay, so there's our hull void that's giving us, ensuring that a person can get into this area, that there isn't some invisible something that didn't allow it. Okay. Now, what do we have? There's our hull voids. Hull voids, uh, we've got our, the hull void is done. The room voids should be named. This is uh, important. So let's, which one is that? There's, oops, there's both room voids. I'm going to name them both. I guess we can't name two room voids at once. Uh, I'm going to call this the bridge. It's also important that the room void be named the same as the room that it's in. That that room, the bridge, is going to have certain lighting applied to it. The room void says that anything that's inside the same named room void is going to get lit just like anything else in the bridge. Okay, and we're going to change this uh, to the bridge also. <coughs> when a person walks into this these voids, 
and uh, turns the lights on and off. They turn on and off in every, all voids of the same name. Air pressure is maintained in voids of the same name. So these two voids will be one airspace. Okay, so there's my room voids. We built our hull void. Now, for a NPCs to find their way around, we need to provide them with a hint about how to find their way around. I'm going to move my grid to the floor of the room, and I'm going to draw a part that's called a, a walk path. Walk paths show the AI how to walk around the, uh, the object. Their basic strategy is to follow the walk paths to the nearest node to the th wherever they're trying to go. And then at that point, that they have to be able to walk straight from there to where they're going without hitting anything. Okay, it's a good idea to not have the walk paths be exactly on the floor. So I'm going to lift this one up by a meter. Okay, because of the shape of our room, any NPC who arrived at the end of this walk path could get to anywhere in the room unobstructed. Likewise, from the outside, we can get outside from here to the outside. It may have, it may be important the the end of that be inside that uh, void. We'll find out. Just to be sure, I'll just move that by uh, comma point one. There we go. All right. So the AI can now find their way to this end. They can walk through and come out. In order for a door to function, there must be a walk path through the door. On this particular model, I'm not sure whether there's going to be enough of a sill that would prevent short people from walking in. So I'm going to add a ladder path to this, the end of this walk path, and I'm going to have it go, oops, I should move my grid to there, and I want my walk path, or my ladder path to go down about three meters, that's good enough. If it goes beyond where the ground is that the sh ship is sitting on, uh, it'll simply be ignored. But going down three meters allows for uh, a little bit of a ground drop off here, and something could walk up to here and grab this and climb it into the spacecraft. So there's our... There's our ladder path. All right. Now this is starting to look complicated, but that's about as far as it's going to get. At this point, the door is not functional. There's we have a step left. The door itself, this this walk path needs to be only usable when the door is open. So we're going to open the door. We're going to select that door and that walk path and we're going to associate them. Part associate. So now the walk path is associated with the open state of the door. When the door closes, the walk path goes away. When the door opens, it's back. But that's not all. We really should do that with the uh, walk. We have to do that with the void of the room also. It needs to be only accessible when the door is open. So we're going to associate it with the open state of the door. And this tends to group them by name, by the way. And you'll start to recognize these patterns and look for them. Okay, so now it's harder to see without the shaded display on. Okay. Now we can see that our, our void space, uh, if we didn't have lines on, we could see it there. We can kind of see that open space. It goes away when the door closes. It's there when the door is open. That's what we want. But uh, there's a in order for the designer to distinguish this door from a hull door, the hull door must also have a hull void associated with it. And that's why we had to draw that, whether we wanted it or not. So we're going to say associate that to the door. So a door with 
uh, a hull void and an interior void associated with its open state is, con is a hull door. That is the definition of a hull door. Now, in order for the game designer to notice that, we're going to go up to the part menu, use properties, select door type and lock. We don't have to change anything. This is going to analyze that door, discover that it's a hull door, and change its type, and that's visible by this icon. Okay, at this point we're getting close to being finished with our design. Let's look at our ship in wireframe. And let's bring up its properties. Notice there is no analysis here. This is because we have to uh, analyze the design. This is instantaneous on a little design like this, but a large design that can take a while, so we'll manually make you do it. Uh, the design name, in this case, we'll call it Basic Design. We're going to go with Starship. The structure setting, by the way, uh, primarily drives uh, the requirements of the hull so that these warnings can tell you appropriately if you have or don't have things that are needed to make that thing. In our case, we're going to make a Starship. The minimum quality is going to be one. We're making a basic ship that should be made buildable by anyone. Uh, hull module, uh, anything here. I like having artificial gravity, so I'm going to turn on the life support gravity module and uh, gravity drive module. Okay, that's all good. This tells me I need a helm. Oops, I forgot my control stations. Let's say okay. Alright, let's go draw a helm. We're just going to put it inside here. Let's put our is our grid on our floor? Let's make sure. I want to put it in the front so I can use it as a uh, as a reference for uh, symmetry. Now my green line is down the middle. Yeah, that looks good. Let's put a helm in. I'm going to go to one meter spacing. Part stations. I'm going to use swivel consoles and chairs because they're easier. Here's our helm. This is the classic old uh, station you would have seen in the old style spacecraft. I'm going to put the pilot back here a ways. Let's just put him right there. Okay. I'm going to scroll down here a little. There we go. There's my pilot. In reality, I'm really going to want more than that, so let's put more stations in. Let's put uh, captain's chair. Let's oops. Let's get ah, another station. Another command chair. Get a couple guys up front here. To get the good view. We're going to go station. We've got, we're going to want an engineer. I mean, realistically. Oh, that looks good. Engineer, by placing an engineer station, you define an FTL drive. If you want more than one engineer, if you want more than one FTL drive, place more than one engineer station. Each one creates a new FTL drive. In this case, we're going to create the, the basic uh, wormhole P FTL drive module. The same is true of weapon systems. When you place the station, it creates the system. Uh, then you allocate uh, uh, stuff to the system. We're going to want a navigator. Let's kind of go for some symmetry here. That looks kind of symmetrical. It wasn't though. I'm going to undo. Or is it? Yeah, I think it is. And uh, we're just going to go big time. Uh, really like having that sensor. Power relay station is completely optional. Not too many choices there. There's our stations. Now, we don't have to have the design 
tell us that we want births. So we're going to want six births for six stations. And in my case, I'm not going to make the geometry for these. I'm just going to place the births, and uh, that's where the crew and other people will spawn. Uh, they're under the details, births, where you want to have a captain's birth. What does that look like? Is he upside down? Click it and go up. Point one. Uh, he is. I'm gonna put my grid here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna move the grid up a little bit. There. Now I can draw these guys just above the floor. Ah, uh, details, births, captain. Can't see my grid very well. I'm gonna turn off the solid. That's, that's a good start. We don't have to get too crazy here. Okay, there's Captain. Uh, details. We'll go with an officer. We like having an officer. These aren't really beds. We're just cre we're creating the uh, crew positions by putting these in, though. Uh, crew. One, two. Three. What if we go uh, put the crew on the other side? Just because our our officer is an elitist on this ship. Ooh, somewhere in that area. our four crew and let's take a look at our we have one captain one officer four crew and four crew stations so I think everybody's happy there all right let's work out the rest of our red here because I think we're done building things we now need seven cubic meters of life support we simply have to move this scroll bar seven. We need a maneuver drive. Actually at this point I would concentrate on engineering. The first thing I would do is wormhole drive. We need 305. Uh, there's my wormhole drive and I'm just gonna put it in there. 305. Okay. And our capacitor is not adequate. We need 47 terajoules and we're only getting zero. Okay, capacitor. There he is. Let's scroll it up. This is pretty linear, so I'm going to get it up to about 46 and then multiply by 10. Looks like 390. We don't quite have enough. There, we were close. Let's go up to 40. Let's go. It doesn't hurt to have a little extra because when you fire that drive, you don't want to have 0.02 terajoules of power left in your capacitor. You might not be able to fire a weapon or something. Okay, we don't have any power plant. Let's now satisfy that de desire. The power plant fills the capacitor with power. The capacitor is like a battery, except that it can discharge all of its power instantly. Now, the thing, main thing we're getting out of power plant is fill time. So it's taking 151 seconds with that size of a power plant. I'd like to get it down to about 30 seconds so that after I fire my wormhole drive it only takes about 30 seconds before I can fire it again. That's, that looks good. And we have no maneuver drive. Let's start giving us some of that and we're going really slow. Our, our vertical acceleration is weak. Earth's gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared so that thing wouldn't even be able to vertically take off from the Earth. The AI always vertically takes off, so you want to have good vertical acceleration for them to be able to get off the ground. I'm going to get this thing up to maybe 150. I'm shooting for 150 meters per second acceleration. There we go, 150. Oops, what did I move? There. 
We don't have enough capacitor. I might have bumped something by accident. Did I run out of fuel? Ah, see there, we're up against our no fuel wall. Well, let's work this out. This spacecraft may not be able to be built at quality one. I probably could resolve it by adding hull space, but let's just increase the minimum quality because we know we're not going to be at that low, that low when we start out. You know, that's our capacitor. We still have no fuel. Okay, solve the problem. Make it 32, just because I like numbers like that. Fuel cell needed. You probably don't need this much wormhole drive now. Three, we still need 305. Capacitor. We need more. I guess I didn't get to be 150 meters per second with my maneuver drive. Let's settle for something less. Capacitor. Okay, let's not go too much more. We, we're we at the low end. We have to be very... We have to accept what we get, I guess. Okay. Let's give ourselves some sensors. And we're up to... 26,000 meters range. That's good for scanning a planet. We've got 13 days of fuel. Uh, really close to using up our whole capacitor to fire. Let's call it 300. There we go. And we have no hold. Okay, we're down to four days of fuel, but our hold can carry 117 commodities. And otherwise, it's slow, And uh, but it might fly. Okay? All right, so the properties look good. Let's go up here to uh, the design now. This is the final step. We're going to finalize the design. Since we're in the offline designer at the moment, this, this, this finalizing process is simply going to analyze it as if I was uh, really finalizing it. But it's going to tell me if there's anything wrong with the design. Oops, it went away. I'd like to have looked at that for a minute. What did it say? It says, FTL drive barely adequate to engage. I was worried about that. Alright, so FTL drive needs a little more size. Let's go 306. See if that's enough for it. it that made it happy. Window 9 has no name. And there's no doors. What do you mean, no doors? There's my door. Okay, this window has no name. It should be named to match the room it's in, in order for the exterior lighting on the or the the night the let me say the interior lighting of the room uh, to illuminate the window at night when seen from the outside. Okay, it warned me that I didn't have a door, but I don't see why I have a door. And that warning went away. I guess it was bogus. Okay, there we go. Design is good at this point. I'm going to save it. Save as. And we'll call this uh, uh, basic ship.